Welcome back to Allison Customs Project Car TV. I'm Jeff Allison and thank you for watching. Customs Project Car TV. Today I'm going to be working on the radiator support for the 66 Chevelle. And uh, the last time you saw this, we built the jig. This is a fairly long video just because it's it, it's a lot of process just trying to make sure all the bolts are in exactly the right place and getting everything lined up. Um, probably mentioned this, or I know I mentioned it in the last video. Um, so I, I used mounts here, or bolt holes here for the uh, original radiator support mounts, or radiator mounts rather, and as it turns out we're not going to need those, so those won't get duplicated in the end. Um, the reason for that is we're going to go with a, a wider and taller radiator than what came stock. So that'll basically going to fill in all the way to the edge of the tubing coming up here and all the way down here. I'm um, waiting on the final design from the, the guys building the radiator, which is uh, CNR Racing. Uh, we decided to go with them because we're already using their intercooler and a couple other parts, so it just made sense to kind of stick with one company and everything should work together that way. Um, we also have, I'm going to grab them real quick, the design on the radiator. This is their uh, intercooler for the supercharger. And the design is going to be somewhat similar. We're going to have a couple of posts up here like this, a removable plate, same kind of thing on the bottom. We've got pins. The radiator is going to have that, so that's why we're deleting these bolt holes. And then this will most likely need to mount on this side. And then the radiator on the inside, basically just all but sandwiched right up against each other. Um, and that's by uh, that that part is from uh, CNR Performance. I think I've called them CNR Racing a few times. Um, additionally, we have an oil cooler for the engine that needs to go somewhere in this range, probably. Or on, and I'll probably keep it on this side just because the plumbing for the engine is on this same side. So I was trying to keep the plumbing shortest route. And then we have a power steering cooler. Which Power steering is also on this side, but probably what I'll do is end up mounting the smaller one on the other side. That'll get painted black to match everything else. Um, so we got quite a few parts to go in here, and which is the reason for making all this custom size anyway. So um, that's it. I'm going to get started. Now you've seen some of the parts, and we'll get this thing going. I guess what I'm going to do now. Is, uh, I want to reuse these upper brackets, the bolt to the fender. Um, so I'm going to fill out all these spot welds. panel separator and it's it's just made to be able to beat on the end and it's got a rubber handle on it so you can kind of wiggle it back and forth because you can kind of drive it in between them right on the welds. There it is, that's the jig. So the next piece of this, I've got the, the mounts cut off of the original radiator sport. So the next thing is to come in with a piece of tubing to lay like that. And it's got to be underneath these tabs, it's got to fit inside there, and it needs to line up somewhere close to that. So it's going to be a little bit of a rise and a little bit of a curve. So we'll probably just roll that curve in and then roll opposing curves on each side and then 
once those are once that bar is in place I'll, I'll bolt it and tack it in place and then I'll come off of these mounts and either come up and turn in so it'll kind of come up and make a J and turn into the tubing or kind of make a, a little S curve. Either way we want as much clear space in there as we can. And there's a few things to figure out in there. For example, we're going to want this mounted. It's not going to work that way because of this is where the inner fender comes down so we got to clear that. It could be something like that. You could also come all the way over and be right in front of the radiator or down low in front of the radiator. So there's there's some other options. But uh, get started with that upper tube. So what I've done, marked uh, the center of the tubing and the center of my frame here. Then I've got a line marked all the way along the top so that I have a reference point. And in addition to that, I came over six inches on both sides of center and I've got a dash line there. And what I'm telling myself is I want to start there and I want to curve the tubing down one inch. And I know just my plan is I'm going to curve it down an inch and then it's going to come back parallel. Same thing on this side down and back parallel. Additionally, on the top, this jig or the this radiator support actually goes into the inside of the car and back out a little bit. So this is set in some. So we've got to roll a curve in here and back out parallel an inch and a quarter. So those are just my notes. That's how I'm looking at it, referencing it. And uh, I'm going to back you off here again and get to watch how I start rolling that on this on the uh, tubing roller. Took off for lunch, so I covered that up. I'm trying to keep the heat out of it from the sun. It worked. Um, so I just realized that once again, a different plug was unplugged on my uh, microphone again, so I have no idea if I have any audio from earlier today. Once I get into the editing, I'll find that out. So there may be a bunch of voiceover on this video as well. Anyway, what I've done is bent up this tube. I was going to try and roll it on the on the tubing roller and all the all the turns and to everything was just really tight so I ended up pulling out the uh, tubing bender and threw them up on there. Um, so what you can see here is this tube not only does it drop down here but it also curves back in to get over there. And then what I've got with my clamps is a so these brackets are actually need to loosen this clamp and make sure these are good and tight. Then what I was doing is rotating this just a little bit so it would touch all the different places. And I think it's pretty close. But like I said, I'm going to loosen these, all these clamps up real quick, make sure these are tight. Because I think I just put those nuts in there, the bolt and nut in there, finger tight. And then once I'm happy with the position of this, then I'll come back off of here. And probably it's, it's not quite vertical here but it's it's not far off to just come up and then put a little curve in so I think I'm just going to come straight up with that these we ended up probably not going to end up needing so then it's just a matter of building plate or tube or something here and anyway mounting mounting in this corner and in this corner to catch the headlight and the uh, inner fender so I'm going to get started on that now and probably put you back in time lapse and Hopefully there's information from this morning still.
Okay guys, so what I got is the uh, driver's side done. So you pretty well see the notch that it took. And what I had is a 75 degree bend and that was just, I just bent it until I liked what I saw. So that's where I stopped. Um, and I just, you, you can see in that other video, I just kind of snuck up on it. Took my time getting there so that I didn't end up having to remake it. Now on this other end, because it's going to be bolting to the frame with a bushing, I need to put a nut inside here and and cap that off. So what I'm going to get is a washer that'll fit in there, weld a nut to it, set it in there, and then weld it to the pipe. So that's uh, my next step, and I'm going to go get the stuff for that. There we go. That worked. So then what I've got is a couple of... Got a couple of grade eight, I think these are cadmium plated um, washers. You don't want to breathe that crap when you weld on it, so I'm going to try and clean that off first. And then I've got some grade eight weld on nuts, and I'm just going to weld the nut onto the washer. Then I'll put a bolt in it and hold that up in there and weld the washer to the inside of the tubing, and that'll give me a a method to attach it to the car so let me get my sander and we'll clean these washers up tubing like so, weld it in there, let's get it tacked in there. Now that can go back in place over here. Make another one look just like it. The good news is, is I bent when I was doing my bending, I went ahead and bent another one with the same curve on it, and we'll just end up cutting it way back here to that first so to get it on the other side. So what I've got is on the uh, frame, probably saw me drilling out the holes in the frame horns. And uh, what it is is this bushing, for about an inch and a quarter, the hole in the frame was only about seven eighths of an inch, a little under actually. So I drilled the frame out to one inch and I'm cutting this down to one inch. And that leaves a little bit of meat around the, the steel uh, sleeve that goes in here. bushing they come in like so and the top side bushing like that 
Same on this side. I already have the bottom one stuck in there. Top side bushing. That goes there. So now we can set the. Uh, so we need a couple washers, which we have right here. And we can set the. Radiator support in place. All right, so. One of the things I'm going to do is, since everything's blacked out, these will get, washers will get blacked out. And I may go ahead and trim that down to where it just fits the bushing just right. And then I may even weld it to the, to the upright tube here. But other than that, the, so other than that, it fits nice. And the only last thing I've got is to put the, uh, book, the bungs, the threaded bungs in for the hood, hood catch to go. Right here, and they don't just hang below, they're actually kind of about three quarters set in there, and then they'll bolt in, put that flush there. The reason I haven't done those two yet is I either have to figure out how I'm going to convert that this uh, hood latch to where instead of just having the primary release, it has both this release as well as a, a uh, security release from inside the. the uh, inside the car um, just to keep people from you know being able to pop the hood and steal something or whatever um, that was at the owner's request so figure that out or I may end up just going over and taking a completely different one off like say a later model car and uh, converting it for that so uh, other than that all looks pretty good it's time to get the inner fenders and the fenders on this Hey guys, welcome back to Allison Customs, uh, Project Car TV. So I've got some new t-shirts uh, finally came in. There's black and gray. And the way I'm gonna set this up is, if you're interested in buying one of the shirts, uh, you'll be able to send a payment through PayPal at uh, jeffrey at allisoncustomsonline.com. I'll put that in the description. I'll also flash it up here on the screen. And uh, they're gonna be $20 for the contiguous 48 states. Uh, and that includes the shipping for both gray and black large and extra large. Um, I am gonna do a deal if you buy three, uh, I'll do it for $55 for the three of them. So I'll save a little bit there. And again, there's still just large and extra large on sizes. Um, any combination of the black and gray. And then like I said, I'll put some pictures up here after this so you can kind of get a little better view of them. But uh, I do wanna thank y'all for watching all the channels and anybody who was asking about t-shirts finally coming out, here they are. Like I said, $20 through PayPal, and I'll put the uh, address up on the screen and in the uh, comments. So, have a great day. Thanks for watching Allison Customs Project Car TV. Like us on Facebook and check us out at allisoncustomsonline.com.